Hi, welcome to the Holiday Park United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Pat Nelson. It's good to have you here. Come on in and look around. We have a lot of great people who love Jesus and are growing in their faith. We would love to have you join us for worship and join us in serving the Lord. Well, good morning and welcome to the Holiday Park United Methodist Church where you are welcome at the 8.30 as well as the 10 a.m. service. We welcome everybody in our sanctuary today as well as our YouTube audience at home. Thank you so much for joining us. Sunday school is available after the 10 a.m. children's sermon. Nursery is available for babies through two at the 10 a.m. hour. Facebook page and web page, best places to go to find out what's going on in your church. Preschool registration, they're filling up. Please, you have to call Holly Cook at that telephone number or stop in and see her. Uh, the classes are just filling up very, very fast. You probably will need to get on a waiting list, but if you know somebody who wanted to get into the preschool, have them talk to Holly Cook as quickly as you can. Sunday, uh, uh, preschool substitute opportunities, easy for me to say, are available if you love children and have flexible schedules and need clearances. Now, there's not too much left of the, this school year, but we're also looking for help uh, in the 23-24 season. So please, again, see Holly Cook about those opportunities. Volleyball at Holiday Park. This Tuesday is the last Tuesday, 6.30. Friendly games, a nice place to meet friends and get some exercise, but this is the last Tuesday until fall. So please, if you want to get one in, Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. You know, it's my bad. Before I turn this over to Marty Nice, uh, it's my bad. Uh, we had a praise that kind of slipped through the crack. Uh, Scotty and Lauren McGuff had a baby. Yeah, Griffin Scott was born last week, uh, So, and Dakota has a little baby brother now. Uh, Brad and Linda, of course, uh, Lauren's parents, and of course our own Lucy and Tom McGuff are, are the grandparents, so please uh, keep them in prayer for, for their health. Uh, the baby and Lauren are doing wonderfully well, uh, but that is a new addition to our extended family. Good morning. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. Welcome. It's wonderful to greet you in the name of Jesus. Thank you. We are glad to be here. We, today we will speak of a special walk Jesus took. <laughs> we are here to hear about this. Yes, but it isn't only about Jesus, it's also about us. The Lord, make us ready for this walk with Jesus.
Please join me in our unison prayer. Gracious God, you have given yourself to us in the person of Jesus. We have his example of loving ministry as a guide for our lives. We stand as people forgiven and reconciled to you. Be with us this day. Remind us that you are always near. Guide our lives. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Please listen to God's word as it comes from us from the Old Testament, Psalm 116. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Truly, I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call in the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord. In your midst, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, praise the Lord. This is the word of the God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Boy, you guys are a good looking group. There's a bunch of you. You know what? I want you to stand up, turn around. We're going to see how well these people know your names. Come on, we need to make you one line. We'll put these little ones in the front. You bigger boys come in the back. All right, here we go. Now, they're probably going to need help. So what I want you to do is when I put my hand on your shoulder, I want you to say your name, okay? And they're going to be watching on the screen so they'll be able to see your face and be able to get to know your name. Evelyn. Evelyn. This is Evelyn. Will. Ren. 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 What? Rhett. Rhett. Sorry about that. My ear, my ears were plugged up. Sammy. Sammy. Miranda. Miranda. Brian. Wyatt. Ethan. Ethan. Zachary. Zachary. Owen. Owen. All right. Now I'm going to run the other side. You guys catching all of these names? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now we'll go from this side. All right. Turn around so they can see you. What's your name? Cassie. Cassie. Katie. Katie. What's your name? Cammy. Cammy. Roland. Roland. Penny. Penny. Benny. 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 Zachary, got you. Okay, you guys got all of those names? No. Okay. All right. You guys got all of those? Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Turn around and sit down. It's good to know your name. Do you know God knows all of our names? Yeah. He does. And he even knows how many hairs are on your head. All, he knows how many hairs are on your head. And if you pull one out, he knows how many you pull out too. Where is Jesus? In your heart? In heaven? Right here. Right here. You are absolutely right. Where else? Everywhere we are, right. Does Jesus being everywhere we go, right here in your heart, does that make you feel good? Or does that kind of scare you and give you the willies just a yes. little bit? Because he just like watches me every single minute. He watches you every single minute. That's kind of scary, isn't it? Yeah. Well, sometimes, well, the Bible tells us that Jesus is with us and Jesus reminds us, oh, we got another one coming up and who are you? What? Nicola, will you take your hood up? All right, now we can see your face. There you go, good. The Bible tells us that Jesus is with us always and Jesus reminds us that he's with us. 
Now, is he only with us when we're being good? No. Is he only with us when we're being bad? No. Is he with us when we are good? Yes. Is he with us when we are bad? Yes. Yeah, he's with us all the time. And the Bible tells us that Jesus comes into our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit, so he can be with us all the time. And there's a song that I want to teach you. Casey's gonna play it, and the choir's gonna help us sing it, and then all of the congregation, if they want to, can join in. We don't have the words up on the screen, so you're gonna have to listen. It's easy. It goes, into my heart, into my heart, into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. That's the song, okay? Yippee. Yippee, and that's what we say when Jesus is in our hearts, yippee. So choir, will you help us sing it? Okay, here we go. Now we're going to all sing it again, and this time the congregation, if they want to, can join in. This is, a, this is a prayer song that we're singing, and if you sing this song and you really mean what you're singing, Jesus will come into your heart and be with you all the time. So let's all sing together. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that we can be together and we can invite you into our heart to be with us forever. And thank you for loving us so much that you want to be with us all the time. As these guys go to Sunday school and as we continue in our worship, help your song be in our hearts. And we invite you each and every moment to stay close to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll eventually get all their names. I invite you to stand. Let's sing together. Open my eyes.
may be seated. Please go before the Lord with me in an attitude of prayer. Dear merciful, dear ever-present Lord God, please open our hearts and our minds and our eyes to see you, to know that you are present with us. Thank you for bringing us here to this time and this place so we can worship you. Thank you for your amazing grace that reaches out to us even when we've separated ourselves from you. Thank you for loving each one of us enough to send your only son, Jesus, to give his life on the cross and raise again from the dead so that we might believe in him and turn from our sins and receive eternal life with you that begins right now and continues on into forever. Lord, thank you for the victory over sin that Jesus makes possible for us to receive. On this beautiful day, Father, we thank you for another day of life, for another day to spend with you. Please give us the courage to follow you into your plans for us this day. Please help us to stay close to you, to follow your will, and to obey your word. Here are prayers for each other, Lord. For those whose names and faces comes to our minds and in our hearts. Please bless those who grieve over the sickness or death of a loved one and make a way for them to bear up under the strain. Give them courage and strength. Please bless those with difficult situations at home. Please be with them in the struggle and give them your wisdom as they make their decisions moment by moment. Please bless our homes and your church with your peace. Please be with those who suffer from sickness or physical afflictions, and we ask for you to comfort them and heal them. Please open our eyes to see that your grace, your amazing grace is sufficient for each of us. Open our eyes to see the abundance of your blessing and all of the reasons you give us to celebrate your presence with us. Help us to see your miracles all around. Lord, hear our prayers for our nation and our president. Please hear our prayers for the missionaries who serve you throughout the world. Please protect them from harm. Help their faith to remain strong in persecution. We ask that you protect all those who have faith in you and protect them from the evil one. Please protect and provide for all those who believe in you. Help us to pray, Lord, not just with our words, but with our actions and our lives. And help us to pray all the time, not just in a crisis. Give us a love for your holy word so that we take time to read the Bible every day. And especially, Lord, give us a driving love to pray for the souls of others. Please hear our prayers. Please hear the prayers that we pray in Jesus' name and bless us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Those kids being up front here makes me think of Club 56 that we had on Friday. What a wonderful time that was. 
It makes me think of Vacation Bible School that's coming up this summer and what a great time that will be. It makes me think of all of the ministries we have here at this church that are for the specific purpose of introducing people to Jesus and helping people of all ages to grow in their love for Jesus. Your gifts, your tithes, your offerings help make that possible. God has blessed us so abundantly as individuals and as a church, and God continues to bless us as we step out in faith and in obedience to his plan for our church. As the usher comes forward with the tithes and offerings, let's all stand and celebrate God's provision in our lives. Lord, we do praise you. We are grateful for all that you offer to us. You offered your son, Jesus, who gave his life on the cross. He offered himself to all of us so that we might be reunited with you. Lord, help us to open our eyes to see the extent of your love for us, to see the extent of the price that Jesus paid for us, to see the opportunities that you give us to reach out and love to others through not only our tithes and offerings, which you've already given to us, but through the events of the day that you caused to cross our path so that we can tell people about you with our words and our lives and our attitudes everywhere we go everything we do thank you for your presence with us we ask that you bless these tithes and these offerings that we may continue to fit into your plans for us as church and it's in jesus name we pray amen
The New Testament lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who had said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are, how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The scripture that I just read is an account that is only found in Luke's gospel. You will not find this particular account in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Uh, only in, excuse me, Matthew, Mark, or John. It's only found in Luke. And it's an account about two men who were walking to Emmaus from Jerusalem. One man's name is Cleopas. The other's not identified, but he was probably a friend of Cleopas. We know that they both lived in a town called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And to put that distance into context, Monroeville Mall is five and a half miles from here. So you would have to walk to the mall plus an additional mile and a half to get to Emmaus. Cleopas and his friend would have been forced to stay in Jerusalem after Jesus' crucifixion because there was a law that prohibited travel on the Sabbath. Now, as I think through this scripture, it's reasonable to think that Cleopas and his companion had followed Jesus closely enough during his ministry to have listened to Jesus' teachings about how to love God and treat other people. They may have been convinced that Jesus was the one sent from God to free the Jewish people from Roman rule. The same as God had freed the Jewish people from Egyptian persecution under the leadership of Moses several hundreds of years ago. Now, 
after a long week, Cleopas and his friend are walking back home to Emmaus from Jerusalem. The Bible tells us that as they were walking together, another man approached them, and the three of them journeyed to Emmaus together. This third man on the journey was none other than the Lord Jesus himself. Cleopas and his friend, however, were somehow prevented from recognizing Jesus. They accepted the stranger, they welcomed him as a traveling companion, and while they were walking, they discussed the events of the last few days. The stranger on the road helped Cleopas and his friend sort through the events of the last week. The stranger on the road also helped them to sort through their feelings from the facts of the last few days of the week. Jesus shared with them all of the scripture verses that talked about why the Messiah had to suffer and die. And he explained to them from the Old Testament scriptures that the worst enemies the Messiah came to free them from were their own sins. Jesus gave them a lesson in Old Testament prophecy. This was Jesus' first sermon after rising from the dead, and this first sermon was to Cleopas and his friend. Jesus pointed out to them all of the things that pointed to Israel's mission of extending God's love to all people and all nations. Jesus explained to them that the Messiah's purpose was to make possible a new and complete relationship with God. Jesus was able to explain clearly to these two men on their journey that Jesus' crucifixion was the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies of God and that the Messiah's death on the cross is the sacrifice that saves all people from their sins. That was the conversation on that seven mile walk. When they arrived at Emmaus, it was getting dark. So Cleopas and his friend invited the stranger to stay the night with them so he would not have to walk on the road by himself at night. They still did not recognize him to be Jesus. When they invited Jesus to stay with them, I think that Jesus might have said to them, well, I'll have supper with you as long as you let me pray before we eat. And I imagine that they might have said back, well, sure, stranger, you can say the prayer. And the Bible tells us that they went home, they sat down at the supper table, and the stranger picked up the bread, and he broke it, he gave thanks to God, and he began to give it to them. And at that precise moment, they recognized him to be Jesus. Then Jesus was gone. He just disappeared. They could not find him anywhere. Jesus left them. Jesus left them with an understanding of the Old Testament prophecies. Jesus left them with hope. Jesus left them with a confident assurance of the fact and the reality of the living presence of Jesus. They took the word back to the other disciples. Jesus is alive. Luke chapter 24 verse 33 says, and I quote, they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem, unquote. When I was about 10 years old, I was in a crop walk. And a crop walk is a walk in order to raise money for the hungry. And the group of us were walking 10 miles. And it took our group about three hours to walk 10 miles. Cleopas and his friend were adults and they were traveling only seven miles. 
I'm guessing that they made the seven mile trip back to Jerusalem in a little bit under two hours. They walked at night. They had some amazing news to tell that just would not wait until morning. And they were on their way. Now think about this for a moment. Think about how Jesus came to his disciples in the midst of their grief, in the midst of their struggle, in the midst of their uncertainty, and perhaps in the midst of their loneliness. And with Cleopas and his friend, Jesus helped them to understand the truth of the Old Testament prophecies about himself so that they could believe that God's word is true. Then Jesus made himself known to them. That raises a question for us. Would you dare to pray for Jesus to make himself known to you in a way that you will never be able to be alone again? Now think about that. Would you want Jesus to be with you in a way that you would never be able to pretend that you can hide your true thoughts and motives from God ever again. We must never pretend to ask God to give us something. God hears every word we say. And God might just give us what we ask for. I found that it's really important to never shake my fist at God or spout off to God. We have to think about what we're saying when we're talking to God. Kate Smith sang the song, He's Only a Prayer Away. And the words, part of the words of the song are, He came to me when I needed him. I only had to pray. And he'll come to you if you ask him to. He's only a prayer away. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, Jesus says, and I quote, and it's what the choir sang just a few minutes ago. Jesus says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Unquote. Jesus instructs us, seek God and keep on seeking God and you will find him. Ask and God will make you aware of his presence. How could God ever deny such a request? Keep on knocking at God's door and don't give up until God opens your eyes to see that Jesus is for real. Will you dare to accept and welcome Jesus as your traveling companion through this life? If you do, when this life is over and you meet Jesus face to face, Jesus will not see you as a stranger. And you will finally see that Jesus, your closest friend, you'll be able to see him face to face. Jesus' message to the disciples and to the early Christians and to believers down through the ages Jesus' message to us is the same message. It's found in Matthew 28, 20. Jesus says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus is present with us now. The kids knew it. He's with us here in this room now. Jesus comes among us in our worship and when we encourage each other as Christians, 
Jesus comes among us when we sing hymns and praise songs and when we read and hear and listen to God's word from the Bible. Jesus comes among us when just two or three of us pray together, whether it's in this space or at home or outside these walls. Jesus is with us. Would you dare to pray and ask God to give you an awareness and a confident assurance of the fact and reality of the living presence of Jesus with you now and from now on? Everywhere you go and where everywhere you are. I don't know about you, but I think that many of us would have to change the way we talk. I think that many of us would not want Jesus everywhere we go to see and hear what we do and say. I think many of us would feel uncomfortable to have our honest thoughts and motives exposed and seen by God who is standing right beside us. I know a guy who was singled out and prayed over by a group of people who laid hands on him. He felt like it was forced on him. They said it was God leading them to pray for him. When they prayed, he received an assurance and a constant ongoing awareness of the living presence of Jesus with him from that moment on. No matter where he was, no matter what he was doing, he was aware of Jesus' presence with him. True story. For weeks and months afterwards, this guy told me that he would often jerk around and look behind him, especially when he was alone. Sometimes he wanted to be alone, but he could not escape the strong awareness that Jesus was with him. It took him a long time to get used to being fully aware that Jesus is with him all the time. And he told me that at times, at some times, it's unnerving. He has been given the understanding that Jesus is with him to even see his thoughts. Even if he tries to lie to himself, Jesus can see through his lies. We are called to holy living each and every day, and by God's grace, we can continually grow more holy and more faithful. God gives us his grace. God gives us his grace in so many different ways. One way that we receive God's grace is when God forgives us for our sins. The Bible promises that because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we can be made right with God. 1 John 1, 9 says, and I quote, If we confess our sins, that word if is a big word. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Unquote. We can be made right with God. When, when we accept God's forgiveness... We accept for ourselves the hope and the joy in the very real presence of the Holy Spirit. That's true for all of us. Know for a fact that God gives you his hope in the midst of whatever's going on in your life. You can find joy. You can find hope. You can find peace in the midst of of the life-giving presence of the living Lord Jesus. He's alive. He's here. The joy of the Lord is your strength. God opens our eyes to recognize him as he provides for us. I found that I must be willing to accept and be grateful for what God provides. If I want my eyes to stay open to God's presence as I walk with Jesus. 
I said last week that God's word, the Bible, contains many promises to help us in our journey of faith. I also said that God's promise to stand on when you need your confidence in God to be made secure is found in Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. And that's where the disciple John says this, quote, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades." Unquote. That's the end of the Bible promise. That's a promise to stand on. When the storms of life and the confusion of life comes upon you, imagine Jesus. Imagine Jesus standing with his hand on your shoulder and pointing through the storm so that you personally can find your way. I found that Jesus usually does not make the storm go away, but he shows you the way to go so that we can find our way through the storms of our lives. There's a picture that we have in our home. In our living room, this picture is right above the picture window and there's a model of a ship um, in, the, in the window right below that picture. And my husband, Paul, wrote these words to go with that picture in our house. Stand on God's word and act like a man. Steady as she goes and straight on till morning. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. That picture reminds me to stand on the promise that Jesus is with me all the time. I believe that Jesus is here right now. I believe that Jesus is right beside you right now, ready to reassure you, ready to forgive you, ready to strengthen you and empower you to walk with him each day. Count the cost. And then dare to pray for God to make you aware of his presence. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you have walked with us. And we did not recognize you. Lord Jesus, please make yourself known to us. We want you to come to us and reveal to us the things of God especially your presence, that you are with us. Forgive us, Lord, for closing our eyes to you. Help us to see you and to know your presence. Thank you for being here with us today, just as you promised in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, verse 20, where you said, where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Thank you for being here with us. And Lord Jesus, I ask a special prayer that you bless the people in this congregation. Please bless us special and surprise us with how close you really are to each of us. Please open our eyes to the miracle and the power of your presence every day of our lives. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing the hymn, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. I'm going to ask the choir to sing through the first verse by themselves so you can get the swing of the song, and then we'll sing all of the verses together.
Let's all sing. As you go from this place, I dare you to pray and ask God to give you an awareness and a confidence assurance of the living presence of Jesus with you now and from now on, everywhere you go, and to stand on Jesus' promise that he is with you to the very end of the age. Amen. Thank you.